Okay, so it is 4.55 a.m. Saturday, February 27th here in Japan. Total fucking crackhead right now, but I'm going to blast through this question, give you some concise value. We're going to check off the box and some of these high-yield toxins, all right? And I'll make this a 27-minute clip. So we have this three-year-old girl with bloody stool for the past 24 hours with right lower quadrant pain. Obviously, we could think, could this be appendicitis? Uh, but we see that there's an organism here, and we see that our answer choices are all bacterial toxins, okay? So even if you're not sure what the diagnosis, here, diagnosis is here, or you think that this vignette is vague, uh, just by seeing these toxins and knowing which organisms they are associated with, you can essentially reverse engineer and say, oh, right, like, so Yersinia enterocolitica causes pseudoappendicitis plus bloody stool in pediatrics, classically with daycare centers, okay? In adults, they'll get bloody stool plus arthritis. Yersinia enterocolitica can cause reactive arthritis, one of the organisms that does that. Other high-yield ones being rubella, hepatitis B and C, but in adults, uh, you're going to get uh, arthritis and bloody stool. In pediatrics, you're going to get pseudoappendicitis uh, due to mesenteric adenitis slash terminal ileitis. Uh, the daycare centers, high yield for your cinea enterocolitica. Also unrelated to this question, parvovirus B19, high yield for daycare centers. You'll see plenty of questions on parvo and daycare centers. This image is showing us gram-negative rods. Even if you think this is shitty fucking resolution, it's still uh, a lot of your USMLE questions. The pictures are not going to be helpful, nor do you even need this image to answer this question. But this is showing us gram-negative rods. And we look at our answer choices in terms of what is the toxin doing. We'll start with choice A, activation of adenyl cyclase. Wrong fucking answer. This refers to ETEC, enterotoxigenic E. coli heat labile toxin, as well as cholera toxin, uh, Vibrio cholerae. Uh, these organisms are going to, or the heat label toxin of ETEC plus cholera toxin, are going to ADP ribosylate and activate adenyl cyclase, causing increased CAMP, causing chloride to be secreted from the enterocyte of the small bowel into the lumen of the small bowel. Sodium follows chloride to balance charge. Water follows sodium. We get a secretory diarrhea. So ETEC, heat label toxin, is one of the causes of traveler's diarrhea. Cholera, profuse, high-volume, watery diarrhea, sometimes with, uh, quote, rice water stool, specks of mucus, okay? The traveler's diarrhea can be uh, watery or it, they can be they can describe it more as just like a greenish uh, brownish appearance uh, but it, they are not going to describe traveler's diarrhea as profuse high volume watery diarrhea the way that they do for cholera okay now looking at choice B activation of guanylocyclase that's the correct answer so both etec heat stable toxin uh, another cause of traveler's diarrhea and your sinia toxin are going to act ADP ribosylate activate guanylocyclase increase CGMP and that's going to prevent the re or prevent the absorption of chloride in the small bowel so we get retention of chloride in the lumen of the small bowel sodium stays with chloride water stays with sodium we get a secretory diarrhea your sinia sometimes unlike the others so we said the etec both heat label and stable those are going to be watery cholera is high volume watery your sinia can sometimes be bloody why is it sometimes bloody? No fucking idea, okay? But it is. So for USMLE, uh, your sinia enterocolitica, bloody diarrhea, and pseudopendicitis and peds, bloody diarrhea, arthritis in adults, uh, we, and it uh, activates guanylocyclase, okay? So before I move on, just because of its yieldness, I want to do a very concise recapitulation of these two toxins. So we have ETEC heat label toxin and cholera toxin are going to activate adenylocyclase, increase CAMP. Okay, and then for uh, ETEC heat stable toxin and your sinia toxin, increase CGMP, activate guanylocyclase. Okay, that distinction, those four toxins, high yield, and then your sinia being the bloody one. Looking at choice C, cleavage of snare protein, wrong answer. This refers to uh, tetanus and also uh, botulism. Okay, so Clostridium tetany and Clostridium botulinum. So uh, inhibition of presynaptic snare pro protein prevents the release of neurotransmitter. So in the case of Clostridium tetany, it's going to be prevention of the release of the inhibitory amino acid glycine. Therefore, you get excitation and hence tetany, okay? Uh, with Clostridium botulinum, uh, you get prevention of the release of presynaptic acetylcholine. So we get muscle flaccidity, okay? But in both cases, inhibition of uh, snare or cleavage of snare protein, okay, an inhibition of the release of neurotransmitter. 
Choice D, wrong answer, in inactivation of 60S ribosomal subunit. This refers to Shigella and also EHEC and Durhemorrhagic E. coli. Uh, Shigella producing Shiga toxin, EHEC producing Shiga like toxin, aka Vero toxin. Uh, these are going to uh, cleave the 60S ribosomal subunit. Uh, these organisms classically associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome. Choice E, wrong answer, inhibition of elongation factor 2 refers to diphtheria toxin as well as uh, pseudomonas. Okay. So diphtheria, classically, your pseudomem the gray pseudomembranes in the posterior oropharynx uh, can cause uh, myocarditis, uh, pseudomonas, a variety of, variety of infections, classically pneumonia in cystic fibrosis patients over the age of 10, also burns that are blue or greenish in color due to pyocyanin or hot tub folliculitis, okay, or otitis externa, um, or diabetes, osteomyelitis. So a lot we can talk about, okay, uh, but the, the short concise explanation for this question is you should take home that your sinianterocolitica will cause pseudoappendicitis and it will present with bloody stool and in adults can be arthritis instead of the pseudoappendicitis and that it it uh, activates guanylocyclase okay so these toxins this is just checking the box on uh, some high yield uh, points for USMLE okay obviously I'm going to make more content we'll discuss all fun details okay give you more points uh, so if you liked this video subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.